How to localize the new SFX journal search and A to Z list. The SFX June 2017 release includes a new and improved user interface to the SFX journal search and A to Z list, fully configurable via SFX Admin and Admin Lite for Total Care customers. The new journal search user interface is available under its own URL, so it doesn't affect the old A to Z list and you can switch to the new UI in your own time. In this session, we'll briefly demonstrate the interface and then show you how to localize it. Here we are in the new journal search page. You can navigate to it by following a URL of this pattern. You can find your URL under SFX Admin Journal Search. The UI has been revamped to provide a state-of-the-art user experience. All functions are now displayed on one page and you no longer need to use tabs to navigate between the search and the browse functions and the information provider, category, and peer-reviewed filters. You can remove any of these elements via the SFX admin configurations. For example, if you don't want to display the provider filter or subject filter. The user flow now requires less clicks to get to the full text or view the details of a listed journal. Click on a journal title to see its details and available services. The details now appear in the sidebar rather than the link menu. You can view the full text directly in the target platform by clicking on the target platform link. Now let's make a search to look at a few other features. Here you can switch between table and detailed results. And you can see the peer-reviewed and open access indicators. There are other options, such as those related to specific languages and alphabets, that you may find useful. We encourage you to explore the new journal search yourself in a June release environment or higher. Now let's see how you can configure the journal search in SFX Admin, or in Admin Lite for Total Care customers. So we have a new section here under Configuration, Journal Search and A to Z List. Now you can still access the configuration for the old SFX A to Z list from here, but configurations to the new journal search page are made under the main tab. There are five sections with configuration options. The general section provides you with the default link to your new interface, and it also gives you an option to transfer settings from the old user interface to the new one and to switch between new and old settings. The content section can be used to include or exclude specific content providers or object types and to define what data elements should be displayed. In the design section, you make changes to the look and feel of the interface, such as colors, images, changes to links, and the design of the top bar. In the search results section, you can configure the default settings for the search box, filters, the browse list, and the results list. Here you can also specify which interface elements should be displayed. The Languages section controls whether to show a language in the drop-down menu, which languages to include, and which A to Z headers to display. Note that text labels are changed elsewhere under SFX Admin, Home, Translations, and Display. The Help link leads to an article in the Exlibris Knowledge Center on how to localize your journal search and A to Z list. Now let's go through the different sections in detail. We'll start with the General section. First of all, you can create different profiles in your journal search. These profiles can have different content and a different design. This function is the same as in the old A to Z list. It allows you, for example, to provide different departments with different lists. Each profile has its own URL and can therefore be incorporated in different department pages. You may also want to create a search page for databases if you added them to the SFX knowledge base or for other purposes. If you do not use different profiles, this drop-down list won't appear, and you can create new profiles over here by clicking on Create Custom Profile. Here you can see the URL for your journal search and A to Z list. Now, it is important to note that both the new and the old interface are based on the same indexes. Some of the localization options depend on re-indexing. They're marked with an exclamation or double exclamation mark and we'll see that as we go over the other sections. The joint dependency of the old page and the new page means you cannot do configurations on both of them at the same time. You can use either only the new or only the old configurations. To prevent configuration conflicts, 
The affected options are grayed out and not usable on the new configuration as long as the active settings are set on old. In my example, they're already on the new version. We recommend you also switch to the new settings and not touch the old version anymore. Now here you have the option to transfer your settings from the old A to Z list to the new version. Now a new user interface is always a good opportunity to rethink how you want to present your resources to your users. However, if you have many localizations in the old interface that you want to preserve, you may want to transfer them to the new version. This is especially useful if you created many profiles. Note that once you've transferred your settings, there's no way to automatically reset them back. You'll have to make the changes back manually. Now let's look at the content section. Now usually you want to display all of your holdings, but if for some reason you want to exclude some targets that you activated but prefer not to present on the A to Z list, you can do that here. Or if you want different profiles for different targets, then you can exclude certain targets. So these are the available ones and these are the excluded. Now you'll notice that this option, along with the other options in this configuration page, require re-indexing. And depending on your indexing settings, the change might come into effect only overnight. In our cloud environments, re-indexing is done every night. Here you can define which content to include by service. Normally you want to include only content for which you offer full text. But you may, for example, have loaded your print journals into SFX with a get holding service that you wish to include, or items that are available via a document delivery service. Again, you can choose to create different profiles with different services. By the way, you can see which profile we're currently configuring here. So we're configuring the default profile. You can also select which object types to display. So in this profile, we're displaying everything but the database. You can create another profile that displays only databases, in which case you would check this box and uncheck the others. Here you select which elements to display in the results. Note that this doesn't require re-indexing. So for each search result, you can decide if you want to show the various identifiers, the availability, etc. And you can also specify whether to display related objects, such as succeeding and preceding titles on your journal search page. Now let's look at the design section. In this section, you can localize the look and feel of your new journal search page. The first option relates to the style sheet you're using. SFX provides a default style sheet that's quite large, so we don't provide an option to download it. But if you want to make any changes to that CSS sheet, you can upload your own default CSS file that only includes those classes you want to change. Now you can find out which CSS class you want to change using browser tools such as the ones found in Google Chrome. So you upload your own CSS file here, and you can download an existing file to make additions to it. And you download it, edit, and re-upload. You can find an example of how to do this in the document found here under the Help section. Now here you decide which elements you want to display. So the search box, A to Z bar, browse search by category, browse by provider, or language filters. These correspond, let's go back to our new journal search to the search bar, A to Z list, browse by provider, browse by subject. So you can decide which of these should appear and which should not. Let's say I don't want to show browse by provider, so we'll go back here, uncheck browse by provider, click submit. And now if we refresh here, we no longer have the option to browse by provider. Let's just recheck that. Now the language filters element is this element right here. So if you have search results in different languages, you can filter them by the available languages. And if you don't want this filter to appear, then here you would uncheck the language filters box. Now in the next section, you can add or remove top bar links. Right now, the only link we have in the top bar is the citation linker by default. But you can add a link for ebook search or, for example, for your home page, you can add several links using the plus icon. Now, the banner image should be your institutional image that appears over here. And you can add a URL that the user will be redirected to when they click on the image, for example, to your home page or wherever you like. 
Now you can also decide whether to display the peer review indication and you can also upload a different icon if you don't like the default one. And the same thing here with the open access indication. Now you have all these help icons that explain a bit more about each option. For example, here you can see the recommended image size for the banner image. Now let's move on to the search results section. Here you can configure how searches behave and how results are displayed. So for example, you can define whether the search should default to starts with, contains, or exact, what kind of search query it is, whether to enable autocomplete or to show the filter for peer-reviewed journals. That's this filter over here. And you decide which default view is displayed first table view or detailed view. So table view, detailed. In our case, the details is shown by default. And finally, how many records per page in the search results. When you're done, you click Submit. The last section of our configuration page, besides the Help section, is Languages. This section is primarily of interest to those of you who have interfaces in several languages and journals in different language alphabets, such as Hebrew, Chinese, Japanese, or Russian. So in our case, the language dropdown for the user interface includes English, Spanish, Danish, and Hebrew. So if we take a look over here, the users can select here in which language to view the UI. Of course, you need to have labels for each of these elements in each language. And of course, you can hide the language dropdown by deselecting this option. The first language here will be the default language of the interface. Now, I'll just remind you that for every language, you want to update the relevant labels. And you don't do that from this menu. You do that from the SFX admin homepage, configuration, translations, and display. Now here you select which languages appear in the A to Z bar. In my case, I have US Standard, Hebrew headers, and Hangul headers. So looking back at our journal search page, I can select one of these three languages, let's say Hebrew, and now we have the Hebrew alphabet. Now to wrap this up, a few words about good practices with going live with your new user interface. Um, as pointed out before, the new user interface has its own URL that you can find here under the General section. Once you've finished your configurations and localizations, you can either use this URL or you can change it. If you only link to your journal search page from your library homepage, then it's easiest just to go to your homepage and change that link to the new URL. If you link to the journal search in many different places and you don't know all of the places, you can also change the Apache configuration to redirect the old links to the new pages. You can learn how to do that under the release implementation notes in the Knowledge Center. So thank you for joining us. This was how to localize the new SFX journal search and A to Z list. You can learn more in the documentation by clicking on help over here or going to the links now displayed.